What a fine day. What a fine day to explore old art. You ever just have one of those days, you know? Nostalgia. You just want to look back at everything and take it all in. Do you want to come on an adventure with me? I found my high school art portfolio and a couple sketchbooks. I think we should look through it. But first, let me just take a moment to deliver some very sad, heartbreaking news. Almost exactly one year ago, my basement flooded. And I'm not talking about just an inch of water. I'm talking about it flooded. So I'm pretty sure there was more artwork than this from my high school time. However, a lot of my stuff got ruined in that flood. So I'm showing what I have left. <laughs> I try not to think about that flood because a lot of my family pictures got ruined. So actually some of this stuff might be repeats from really, really old videos on my channel. But if you don't want to watch awkward, shy Miranda with bad lighting and no microphone whatsoever, whispering in her room because she didn't want her family to know she had YouTube, you're better off watching this video. <laughs> First, let me, let me preface this by saying I had quite the angsty stage of life and apparently I taped, what is this? Why did I tape a gum wrapper to my sketchbook? That's low key disgusting. Mm, there's some good stuff in here. Ooh, this is like a, a sketchbook tour and some paintings. I think we should start with the paintings. Sorry, this is all over the place but I kind of feel all over the place today. So let's get this portfolio out. Uh, there might be some college stuff in here too. I don't know, we'll find out. Ooh, there is some stuff I actually forgot about in here. What is this? Oh yeah, this is not from college or high school. This is from when I first started YouTube and I was in the YouTube Artist Collective. And I think I had a deep meaning behind this at the time, but I don't remember it. You'd have to go watch that video. <laughs> I did not paint the sides of this either, which is very unusual for me. Moving on. So here is a piece that I did in high school. My art teacher had us do a lot of self-portraits. I think we did like yearly self-portraits if I remember right. But this was one that I did and I was always really, really interested in capturing portraits at unique angles. So you can tell I was really interested in that in this picture. And then I remember a college professor came to our school and critiqued this and he gave me really good advice. He said to paint in the direction that things are going because I didn't do that in through here. And that was mind blowing advice for me at the time. So this painting changed a lot for me. Like when I had this professor critique it. And at the time, I actually did not take it well. I was like, bro. <laughs> no, I actually didn't say anything, but yeah, I was not taking it too well, my little teenage self. But I'm really thankful to that professor who just gave me all this advice. It has helped me tremendously to this day. Oh yeah, I was also really into photography back then. So here's a, a picture I took when I was on a ship somewhere. I don't really remember. Like, you know how you tour those like historical battleships? It was one of those. Okay, this is my least favorite medium of all time, charcoal. But we had to practice with reflections quite a bit. So we would often draw like light bulbs and stuff. And yeah, that's pretty much all I remember about this piece. 
I kind of want to do stuff like this more because these kinds of activities may not seem like the most entertaining when you're doing them, but I feel like these are always the ones that I learn the most from. If you are in middle school, junior high, high school, college, and you're getting art assignments like this that you loathe, you may look back 10 years later and be very thankful for those. Oh, here's another self-portrait. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. Looking at this one actually reminds me of how I felt at the time. Like I struggled through this painting a lot and I think the anatomy and getting the colors right was really hard for me. Um, so to this day when I look at it, I think I remember that. This makes me wanna paint people again though. So I'll just be real with you, but YouTube and doing art kind of makes the process a little bit more challenging because you know, you have to make sure all these lights around you work, your mic works, your camera's in focus, the filming temperature is okay, and all these like outside elements on top of trying to film. And I usually try to do shorter projects for my YouTube videos for that reason. It's just a lot of work and editing is a lot of work. Um, but I miss being able to spend like two weeks on a piece. So that might be a goal for this year is to do stuff that takes a lot more time. We'll see, I'm not making any promises. And if I do that, I'm not even sure if I'll feel up to filming it, but for personal goals, that would be fun. What is this? <gasps> oh, mm. I just found a drawing that, oh my goodness, this drawing took so long, took so, so long. And it is in one of my favorite places in my high school. And at the time I just loved making it. I can't believe I still have it. I, I cannot believe this did not get lost in the flood. Like I am so happy. Let me tell you about what is happening here. When I was in high school, I was very quiet. I didn't really talk much unless I was doing speech and debate or if I was doing theater like drama class or, you know, after school musicals and plays and stuff like that. So this here is actually the edge of the stage where all those lights come on and like kind of make it glow upward in the theater. I took a picture with the lights off and kind of made it seem really like cold feeling. The things that I liked to draw in high school were always like the weird things like this that people don't normally notice. I don't know why. This is probably the piece that means the most to me, aside from one that I lost. And I'm so sad that I lost it. Ooh, do you wanna see something that is not from high school but is very mysterious? So this painting here, I don't really know the orientation that it's supposed to be, but Dorvin's sister painted on this side and she wants me to paint over here. And that was like six years ago, maybe seven years ago. I still haven't done my side, but maybe I should for a YouTube video and then, then I'll unwrap this side together. Let me know if you want me to do it. Let me know. Okay, this is like some pressure gouges, gauges, whatever you wanna say, in one of those like creepy rooms in the ship. <laughs> and of course I thought it was cool, so had to draw it. <laughs> oh my goodness. This was like when I first became interested in drawing people. I don't even know how it's in this portfolio though. This is from sixth grade. No, it's not. Okay, 2008, <laughs> we had to draw baby pictures of ourselves once. So it's weird how many self portraits we had to do back then, but I do advise people to do it because it is really helpful. I mean, like you know your face better than any other except your baby face, like that picture. <laughs> Here's some little abstracty watercolor painting of sorts. Ooh, I remember this. This is a drawing of some bananas, again, at a weird angle. <laughs> and yeah, this is with chalk pastel. I have not used chalk pastel much since then, but fun times. This is a picture I took of a lantern. But like, why? Why did I do all these weird angles? I don't know. Uh, 
My, I don't know how this got in here. This is from 2005. Oh wow, 2005. This is like one of the first portraits I ever drew. And again, the yearly self portrait started way back then. I was obviously very young when I drew this. And I just wanna put it out there that if you're young or even if you're just a new artist and you're not happy with where you're at, we all start somewhere. And I am proud of you for starting and I'm proud of you for where you are, so. Keep at it, keep at it. Oh my goodness, why did we have to do so many self-portraits? This is so weird. This is like kind of embarrassing how many we did. Uh. Oh, oh, do you guys wanna see something really just interesting? <laughs> Here we go. I remember being so proud of this back then. <laughs> I think I made it up. I don't even remember. 2008, yeah. So I was a sophomore when I made this. Fun times. Um, I don't know. I guess I painted this in 2005. That's not even high school, but cool. <laughs> uh, what's in this? Anything, anything worth sharing? Oh, this is stuff from like when I first started my YouTube channel. Like I drew Barack Obama. This was like my first year of college. Okay, if you have been with me for a long time, you might remember this painting. <laughs> this is probably one of the very first paintings I did on my channel. I don't even know if I saved the video. I may have deleted it, but. Oh, 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 here's another one, here's another one. One of the very first videos on my channel was Walrus at the Dentist. I know I had other pieces of artwork, but they are probably with my parents or my grandparents, or they got ruined in the flood, so. With that being said, let's look through some of these ones and yeah. with this one here. I do not remember the order of these, so we'll just see what happens. Now, I know I showed this in one of my like six-year-old videos or something, but I was quite angsty at the time I made this. As you can see, I was quite into skater boys. <laughs> Interesting, okay. My bottle of hair straightener fluid. <laughs> Anybody remember that got to be crazy sleek stuff? Now, as you can see, I was not very kind to myself as an artist back then, or really as a person at this stage of my life. So it says these sketches, ugly, hate them all. I do remember my art teacher pulling me aside and like asking if I was okay and stuff after seeing this all throughout my sketchbook. She was very kind and very caring. Ooh, what's over here? <laughs> all right. This is definitely not my art. This is my friend's art. I tucked it in my sketchbook. <laughs> Just another piece of the sketch that I ripped up. So for all you people out there who rip up your artwork, uh, been there, done that, Totally went through that stage. Um, yeah, and I actually, I really regret it. I wish I had never done that. But, you know, I was like 15 at the time. What in the world? This just fell out of my sketchbook. <laughs> Here you go, some early attempts at figure drawing. <laughs> another attempt at figure drawing. And yet another attempt at the same pose. I remember writing, turn pages gently, please, because people would like just take my sketchbook from me and just start flipping through it. And then they'd rip the pages and make me so mad. Well, that's interesting. Oh yeah, all these 90s kids with their lava lamps. I still had mine. See, this water damage, 
This sketchbook was in the flood, but I saved it. Thankfully, no mold happened, so cool. So sad. This was one of my favorite sketchbook pieces. I loved it. Here is evidence of pages ripped out and probably scribbled out too. <laughs> I was so obsessed with eyes. <laughs> Whew. All right, that's a lot of hair. Like a lot of hair. <laughs> Here's some stuff that I must have torn out. I didn't actually tear this one out, but it is scribbled out. <laughs> Man, I loved this iPod. My dog and me. I really liked dogs. Here I am with my nasty button taped to my sketchbook, my gum wrapper. I don't even know. <laughs> All right, one sketchbook down, two to go. After that first sketchbook, I distinctly remember wanting to feel like a professional artist. So I always bought these black sketchbooks here. I think they're by the brand Canson. I don't even know if they make them anymore, but I had to have like uniform sketchbooks at this point in my life. Because apparently it was cool back then, I don't know. Let's see what's inside. Wow. So this is the year I got into Zen Tangles and collage pages. And this page here was supposed to represent like my favorite things. I remember being so proud of this page because of all the different hands. Actually, the anatomy isn't that bad. The composition is kind of strange, but cool. I loved this pair of shoes and I was so mad when somebody in my family threw them away without my permission. So long story short, this is one of my best childhood friends, Tori. And funny story, she met my husband's brother at our wedding and they are married now and we are sister-in-laws. So that's pretty cool. Ooh, I thought I was so cool drawing lost characters on my biology notes. Here's a little monochromatic moment. Hold it though. Why would this candle still be on if it's laying down? That's kind of scary, <laughs> right? Wait a second, wait, wait, wait. I think they're all like that. Look at this. What was I thinking? I just want to like go back in my mind and know what I was thinking, that's all. I was so obsessed with eyes back then. That one is pretty cool. What? I did two of these? Get out, wait a second. What in the world? I do not remember this one, like at all. How strange. I remember being so proud of this eye 
And looking back at it, it's just, yeah, it's kind of cool to see, I guess, how my art has evolved since then. Literally me, how I saw myself, even though I did not dress like that. <laughs> just a little shot up the nose. Oh, this is my friend Kirsty. We're still like really good friends today. That's this sketchbook. One left, just a little bit of color theory. You know what, this might be from after high school because I did not do acrylic painting in my sketchbook until college. gives me some Bob Ross vibes. <laughs> this was really like before I got super interested in painting water. I remember being so proud of this back then. So I'm gonna answer this question because I get this question a lot and I've addressed it recently in a video, but I was not an art major. I did not go to school for art, but I did make it a point every semester to take one class for fun. Even if it slowed down my graduation, I always made sure to take one class for fun. So one semester I did a painting class and this is the sketchbook from that class. <laughs> but I was a biology major, so you do not have to go to school for art to be an artist is what I'm saying. Back to the sketchbook. I hate charcoal so much. Ugh. This was a thumbnail that I kind of redid, and then I turned this into a fully finished painting. If I have the picture, I'll put it up, but I don't think I have the picture anymore. This is kind of cool. <laughs> Little bit of color theory. So I guess I did learn some color theory in college. Here's some more color theory. How interesting. Like I literally do not remember doing this. More color theory. Oh, I remember having to do so many studies before moving on to a piece. He like made us prove that we went out and took the pictures and then we had to draw so many thumbnails and stuff before we could like get the go ahead to do the big painting. Oh look, more color theory. <laughs> Is that literally all I did? Wait, wait, wait. <gasps> Found one. Anyway, it was fun to look through this again. We found some weird gems. We found so many self-portraits that it was cringy, really. I have no other thing to say about that. Wow, what a blast from the past. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. If you're new to art, maybe taking some art classes. Maybe you're not even new to art and you're just not happy with where you're at. I hope this video encouraged you in some way just to see how my art has evolved over time. Pretty much after the final sketchbook I showed you was when I started my channel. So if you want to see more of the evolution of my art, you can start back there and watch, you know, as stuff changes. But yeah, uh, we all go through weird stages, weird phases. I think the joy in saving the stuff that we're either really proud of or maybe not so proud of is so <sighs> fulfilling because, you know, having these nostalgic days where you can look back and see really what has changed uh, 
it is a lot more noticeable years down the road, I think. Like, yeah. That's all I have to say. Have a good day. I will see you next time. And yeah, bye.